What is up YouTube? So it would seem that you are interested in getting more information about the Alter Vanish Carbon. Some of you have sent me questions, which I hopefully already managed to answer in the comments section in my previous video. But with this video, I'd like to give a quick summary of all those questions that you've sent me and kind of share some more details about the Alter Vanish Carbon. Now I received a couple of questions about durability and I've already done a few runs in them. However, you can already see some uh, wear and tear, I'm, I'm afraid. So at the heel, in the outsole, you can see some scuffing right here. You can also see that there's some small holes. I'm probably make some B-roll where it's like little rocks have already like kind of torn or kind of like pressed into the midsole and the exposed midsole. And that's already after a couple of runs. Of course, maybe that just doesn't get worse from here. Maybe this is kind of the normal use of using a shoe. I will probably need to be running a little bit more in them to kind of determine whether they get any worse from here. But as this shoe is marketed as a racing shoe, I wouldn't be surprised if they're not meant for endless miles. They obviously want to keep as lightweight as possible. Obviously that will mean that your ability will have to suffer. It's kind of a shame for, for such a price tag, but I understand when the elites, they just want to run in a pair of shoes and they won't necessarily care about the price tag. In the end, the shoe is probably only worth it for competitive runners or idiots like me that want to try out the latest running gear. Sizing is also a question I've received from many of you because many of you, just like me, have had issues in the past getting the right size. They either come too large, like the Lone Peak, or they're shorter than expected, like the Doran 5. I'm always between a size 10 US and 10 and a half US, and I always make sure that I at least have one thumbs width from my, from my big toe to the front of the shoe, sometimes even more, simply because my feet tend to swell up quite easily during uh, long runs. I've had too many bloody toenails in the past, so I just decided I'd rather get a shoe too big than too small, and that always seemed to work well for me. As for the Vanish Carbon, I decided to go for a size 10, so that's an EU44, because I'll be using it as a racing shoe. I wanted to limit any excess weight, and I didn't want the shoe to be flopping around during a race. I really just want to be able to concentrate on running, and if that means getting bloody toenails in the end, so be it. Now a size 10 isn't too small. I still have plenty of space up front. It feels slightly snug, because it's a slightly slimmer ultra, but it's not tight around the foot at all. As I said in my previous video, it fits like a glove. But obviously, if you don't want this shoe to be too tight, I would just recommend getting the same size as the Rivera or Escalante. Now some of you have the Toron 5, and the Toron 5 is notoriously short. A lot of people needed to size up half a size. So I would recommend if you have a Toron 5 to maybe go half a size down for the uh, Vanish Carbon. Now I do think that the Vanish Carbon looks pretty short, but as they have minimal padding on the inside, you actually have plenty of space inside. I will make some B-roll comparing the insoles of the shoes, but beware, that is kind of deceiving simply because the shape of the insoles are slightly different. Now the Vanish Carbon is pretty flat, whereas the Rivera like kind of cups around the heel. The Rivera is a 10 and a half and my Vanish Carbon is a 10. So if I place them on top of each other, you'll see that it's obviously shorter, has a slightly wider insole. But as I said, that's deceiving simply because the material and the padding on the uh, Vanish Carbon is thinner than a Rivera. So in my opinion, the Rivera does feel more snug than the Vanish Carbon. Here's a comparison of the Escalante. The Escalante is also a 10 and a half, whereas the Vanish Carbon is a 10. Here you can also see that the Escalante is slightly wider and slightly longer, of course. And here comes a more deceiving comparison. So you have the Torn 5 in 10 and a half and the Vanish Carbon in 10. Place it on top of each other. You can see that the uh, Torn 5 is obviously longer because it's the biggest size. However, the shoe is a lot more padded. You have a lot more padding in the heel. The, material, the upper material is a lot thicker. Even though it's a bigger shoe, it will feel a lot more snug, a lot smaller. So a lot of people decided to size up half a size with the Torn 5. But if you compare them next to each other side by side, there's minimal difference. On the outside, first with the Escalante, you can see that it's longer as well as the Rivera is longer. Here's a comparison with the muddy, with my muddy uh, Mont Blancs. These are actually both a size 10 and you can see the Mont Blancs even slightly bigger. Take the insoles out as well. So these are both a size 10. As you can see, the Mont Blanc is slightly wider. Now let's talk about the Eager Pro midsole. I really like the midsole. The first time I put it on, it really felt ni nice and bouncy. However, it is pretty firm. It's not squishy at all. For example, the Ego Max, you can really squish it around. 
really press it in. Press the Ego Pro, pretty tough. When you press it in, like, it's a little bit easier like this, but there's very little give on the side. It's very firm. I consider it a good thing that it's firm because you have a real stable feeling while running. I'm not a fast runner, as I said in my previous video, but I feel fast in them, thanks to the rocker shape. The midsole is made of piba based foam, making it nice and bouncy and lightweight. The carbon fiber plate inside this is asymmetrical, meaning that the shoe can bend in one direction. Not easily, but it does bend, but it doesn't bend in the other direction at all. Totally lets natural movement, so you can twist it. That's no problem. And the foot can move fairly naturally, like also like this when stepping, but it doesn't bend in the other direction. But I know many of you are concerned about Alter losing their natural running mission statement due to this plate. But in all honesty, if they have a shoe with 33 millimeter stack height, it's kind of tough selling that as a natural running shoe in the first place. Now the tongue, where Alter often has a problem, is not gusseted and is really thin and breathable. It's soft, doesn't, it doesn't cut up into my ankles and it's long enough. Um, however, on the inside, I'll need to make some B-roll for that. It does fold fairly quickly. So the first few runs, I actually was running with the tongue folded a little bit. That's a little bit odd, but it wasn't painful. It didn't disturb me at all. Some of you have been asking me about the Vanish Tempo, which should be released this summer. Now shoe brands are pretty smart. So they sell shoes specifically made for racing, but then of course they want to make more money. So they sell a shoe that is very similar in fit and characteristics. So they start selling a training shoe, but one that is hopefully more durable and more comfortable during uh, long training days and enter the Ultra Vanish Tempo. Personally, this shoe probably would have been up, more up my alley. Now, I'm not a competitive runner and I don't expect to break any records anytime soon. And I do spend my own money on my shoes. So as a consumer that would have to choose between the Ultra Vanish Tempo and Ultra Vanish Carbon, I probably should have gone for the Tempo, but I was impatient, so I bought the Carbon. Spending another 200 euros on another pair of running shoes is probably not that smart, but I may need to keep this channel alive, so I may need to spend that money. I'm obviously interested in them, but I'll feel guilty if I spend that much money and have some shoes just laying around. But the same counts for the Managed Carbon. I make sure that I run in all my shoes, I, I buy them. Obviously it's nice to also make a video for them, but I buy my shoes to also run in myself. I make sure that I run in all of them and I make sure that I run plenty of kilometers in them or when they wear out. The Rivera, for example, is not my favorite shoe, but I still managed to get 500 kilometers out of them. I really like the Toro 5. However, uh, now towards 400 kilometers, it's starting to tear on the inside. And the Escalante, they're already reaching, I want to say 800 kilometers. So I'm waiting for the Escalante 3 to come out and I'll replace them. So if this summer the Vanish Tempo comes out and the Escalante around the same time, I'll probably go for the Escalante 3. Now that being said, there's obviously an advantage to buying the Vanish Tempo is that it doesn't have a plate inside. So it's obviously a little bit more healthy for your feet and for your legs because you get to run a little bit more naturally and therefore getting stronger feet and legs in the process. And as soon as race day comes around, you get to run in the Vanish Carbon. Let's also talk about the heel cup because I know that the Mont Blanc has had some major issues with the heel cup. People are complaining that they uh, can't get a good heel lock. And I can see that maybe some people will have that issue with the Vanish Carbon as well. And as you can see, it's more of a V-shape. Escalante has more of a U-shape. Reveva, also more of a U-shape. And the Toron 5, also more of a U-shape. When I'm running, this kind of happens. And the outside walls, they kind of move apart. So it kind of feels odd sometimes when running. So during one run, I actually made it made my shoes a lot tighter and I started to get a blister on the outside of my ankle. So probably on race day, I will need to tape up my ankles, which I always do out of precaution. I make some more B-roll on the inside of the shoe. So it's like very minimal padding on the inside. It's similar to the Mont Blanc, but slightly different. So those were the first questions that I'm managing to cover. If you have any further questions, feel free to drop a note in the comments down below and I'll try to cover it in a future video. In the meantime, why don't you watch one of my other videos and get to know me a little bit better. Thank you guys for watching and see you guys next time. Bye.